No bailouts, huh? <clears throat> it's kind of like uh, we're not in a recession because we ch changed the definition. Now we just changed the definition of a bailout. So Silicon Valley Bank, all depositors will be made whole. Um, now, keeping in mind that they didn't have a massive balance sheet problem, um, especially if they uh, their bonds went to maturity or their treasuries went to maturity. And I, that's what I want to get into. But ultimately, ultimately, I, I want to get to the to the base layer, which is what's the problem here? And is this systemic and is it going to continue? And I think it will um, because of the incentives. Remember, I've said uh, throughout this channel, the government turns honest people into suckers. <laughs> you know what I mean? So if, if you don't want the stimulus, if you don't want the PPP loans, if you're a bank that wants to operate um, with full reserve, for instance, you can't compete. You just can't compete with the free, easy, cheap money because people are always going to go to the cheaper loans. So um, once again, the government has created uh, a moral hazard in the banking system. And that's what we're going to get into today. So, uh, you all know Silicon Valley Bank, the, the, this is from Zero Heads, the, the demise of Silicon Valley Bank is a classic bank run driven by a liquidity event. Liquidity event is banker speak for people ask for their money and they don't have it in liquid form. Just like if all your money was in your house. Now, um, the question is, Will this happen? Will, will there be a bank run, meaning people need more liquidity um, going forward because of, I don't know, uh, a recession? <laughs> um, we'll find out, but let's continue reading. But the important lesson for everyone is that the enormity of the unrealized losses and financial hole in the bank accounts would not have existed if it were not for ultra loose monetary policy. Translation. In 2021, Silicon Valley Bank bought a lot of treasuries because there's free, easy, cheap money. And they're like, hey, money was flowing in. And uh, Silicon Valley Bank didn't take a ton of risks. They um, bought the most liquid asset in the world, other than straight up cash. They bought treasuries and they bought them at a one or zero percent, a very low interest rate. The treasuries were yielding in 2021. They bought these treasuries. Uh, multiple maturities. And here's the problem. Everyone knows that the Fed raised interest rates. So they, ha they have these SVB has these treasuries on their books, right? And no harm, no foul if they hold them to maturity. Let's say it's a 10-year treasury. No harm, no foul. They will get 100 cents on the dollar. However, if they need liquidity right here, right now, they have to sell them at a loss because of the drastic interest rate rises. So, who are you going to blame for that? The Fed, Silicon Valley Bank. Is this uh, only Silicon Valley Bank that did this? A bunch of banks did this. A bunch of banks bought long-term treasuries that didn't yield a ton. Um, and if they get into a liquidity crunch, meaning a lot of depositors need their money back, uh, I don't know, during a recession, um, and businesses, which is what caused Silicon Valley Bank's uh, liquidity crisis because they had a bunch of people in Silicon Valley who weren't doing so good in the tech industry and they needed more and more money. And that caused a liquidity crunch for Silicon Valley. Now, would it cause a liquidity crunch for JP Morgan? I don't know. But what this does do is consolidate um, power into the bigger banks because it, um, these regional banks have a lot less liquidity. That's really what it comes down to. So a run on a, on a JP Morgan would take a lot more people, um, in other words. All right, let's uh, continue reading. <clears throat> SVB made one big mistake. Following exactly the incentives created by loose monetary policy and regulation. Guess what? They're not alone. There's a lot more banks like that. They were following the mainstream rule book, low risk assets to balance the risk of venture capitalist investment, meaning they bought a ton of treasuries, <clears throat> which... I think this is a first, which the drastic interest rate rises, um, causing somebody to have a liquidity crunch because of treasuries. 
Normally it's because they lost money because they didn't lose any money, folks. That was the, that's the crazy thing. So even if the government didn't come and bail them out, a lot of their deposit depositors are going to be made whole up and above 250,000. They just don't have the money right now. <laughs> they just don't. Um, because to sell it, to sell those treasuries meant they were going to lose some money. Continue, continue reading. Rate hikes happened. They were caught in the bank suffering massive losses everywhere. Goodbye bonds and MBS price. Goodbye tech, new paradigm valuation, and hello panic. So it happened in two, uh, 2008. Uh, and on their balance sheet is worse. One third of the U.S. deposits in small banks, around half are uninsured, according to Bloomberg. So these regional banks, half, pe- half the people are uninsured, above 250000 Depositors in SVB will likely lose most of their money and it will create significant uncertainty in other entities. And by now, you know, that the federal government has come in and offered to make um, these depositors whole. And the Federal Reserve has set up a new special purpose vehicle. I don't know what they want to call it, but it is. uh, Here's what it is. It is essentially buying insurance after the fact, after your house burns down. So let me give you an example. Let's say I'm Bank A. I, or let's say just, uh, I'm, I'm Silicon Valley Bank. 2021, I bought treasuries. I bought a 10-year treasury yielding 1%. Treasuries went up to 5% over the next year. And uh-oh, I need to sell my treasury. Here's the problem. I'm going to take a massive haircut on the one I bought in 2021 because in order to balance out with the yields of 2022, I have to lower the price. So instead of having to lower the price, now you can sell it back to the Fed at face value. Back to the Fed at face value. Now, what does this do? Create massive demand for treasuries because it's heads I win, tails you lose. If they buy a treasury and they need to sell it, they can always get face value, meaning 100 cents on the dollar. Do you think that would create any kind of moral hazard in the banking system if it's heads I win, tails you lose? And where's the money coming from? Because they say it's not a bailout. Where's the money coming from? It's financial engineering at its finest. And one thing of all this stuff, all the details that I cover on this channel really kind of doesn't matter if you understand the big picture. This system is unsustainable. This system requires financial engineering and moving things around and not the free market. It is not even anywhere close to the free market. So if you have friends or family who is like, what the heck is going on? And they would listen to some, somebody like me and be like, what the heck is he talking about? Mortgage-backed securities, bonds, treasuries. Okay, here's what you need to know, <laughs> what I focus on. We have $31 trillion in debt. We have $31 trillion in debt. We're going to pay about $1 trillion in interest this year. And we take in about $4 trillion in tax receipts. On top of that, banks create money. When you hand them money, when you deposit it, you're actually giving a bank a loan. And there is so, such malinvestment in the system, meaning people got free, easy, cheap money for such a long period of time, kind of like if you had a mortgage and the interest rate, rate kept dropping and dropping and dropping and dropping. You're like, hey, my payment keeps going down. Fantastic. Um, that's what happened with these businesses, but now everything's changed. We're sucking liquidity. We're sucking money out of the system, but we can't just, it's not like a light switch. The, the economy is like an ecosystem. It's not something you can just mess with and inject liquidity here and take it out there and expect everything to be fine. Things will break. And when they break, what happens? The fed comes in and prints more money. They paper over it. Nothing to see here. And who benefits from that? The rich. And you see it throughout society. You see people getting very upset that housing is more expensive, college is more expensive, food's more expensive, poor and middle class are being decimated, and all they can do is point their finger at the rich. Hey, you can't, don't hate the player, hate the game. The game is the government is rigging the market. They rigged the market. One of the best businesses you could start follow me for more financial tips is a freaking bank. Because if your bank fails, the Fed's going to come in and and just bazooka money in there because it'll, it'll have downstream effects that they don't want it, want it to have. 
And that's what blows my mind. We don't live in a free market. And, and if you're ever arguing with somebody that we do live in a free market, ask them why banks can't file, fail. Ask them about 08. Ask them about the price of money being fixed. We don't live in a free market. More and more people are blaming capitalism for the problems we are seeing today. But I'll tell you this. One, one tenet of capitalism is failure. Schumpeter's creative destruction. Somebody sucks at doing business. Somebody who's good at, at business. If this person fails, this person who has better business practices gobbles up this company. But what the government does now is nobody fails. Everyone gets a new car. And at the end of the day, you cannot print prosperity. That's what it comes down to. And so what are we going to see from this new banking regulation, new um, moral hazard, in my humble opinion? More inflation. That's what it comes down to. Later on today, you're going to see the inflation numbers. And I, I have this very strong feeling, I don't know about you, that they are cooking the books in their favor. Because it's all about crowd control at this point. We don't want people to panic. Okay. So if the if the inflation rate is actually higher, let's go to a closed door meeting. Okay. Let's mark it down a little bit low. Because we don't want people to panic. Same thing with these banks. It's rather frustrating, as you can see. But I mean, my overall point is something that's unsustainable will not be sustained. We are going to crash economy, the dollar-based system. It's only a matter of time. The question is, and this is what we can argue about, is when that's going to happen. But we saw over the weekend that when push comes to shove, printer comes on. Jerome Powell was bluffing. All right. Let me know what you guys think in the comments below. Um, Love to know what you guys are thinking about banking, how you diversify your risk, et cetera, et cetera. But at the end of the day, I'm a big believer in gold, silver, Bitcoin, and real estate to some degree. Things the government can't print more of because guess what they're going to do with your dollars that you work very hard for? They're going to print more of them. All right, I'll see you all in the next one. Peace.